Let's talk about one, this is a, a, a clinical condi condition called alexithymia. Uh, and it's a condition that uh, when people have difficulty experiencing, expressing, and describing their emotional reactions. Uh, so, um, you know, Spock is a prototype of that, you know, the hyper-rational person who has no feelings. Uh, but, you know, while this is a clinical condition, I'll, I'll say that, you know, it could be related to the notion of emotional intelligence. I'll, I'll make a... My assumption of Western society, uh, you know, this could apply to more than Western society, the current world we live in is we're not very good at noticing or expressing our feelings. You know, in, in the West at least, I, I trace that back to very, very early, early on. You know, you can look at Greek philosophers had a very strong distrust of emotions. They saw it as bias. Emotions bias your thoughts. Your thoughts should be privileged over your emotions. Your thought is what leads you, you know, it's the same kind of um, uh, reductionism that Ken Wilber talks about, we talked about Ken Wilber in the first class, in science, that exists in science. Science privileges the, the realm of the objective, tends to ignore the domain of the subjective. And as a culture, we have tend to look down upon the subjective and think of it as bias, see only its negative side, right? And as a result, in school and in society, we're told to that it's a, a set of weakness to have emotions, to express them. That's particularly true for men. Women are a little bit less uh, encouraged to not express their feelings and to push them down. But men in particular, like suck it up, don't express your emotions, don't be a CC, you know. Uh, the idea that if you have feelings and express them, then you're out of control and feminine, right? But even for women, you know, there's this notion that, you know, you shouldn't cry, you know, like, you shouldn't be too overly emotional, don't be hysterical, right? All of these terms that we use, like when we, you know, that sort of clamp down upon emotions. In the world of work, in uh, organizational settings, it's really, really an area where we say emotions have no place. Emotions shouldn't be, don't matter. They shouldn't count. You should leave them out of the equation. And, you know, fortunately, you know, this, this kind of view has changed a little bit. There are some voices that say that's not, you know, come on. You, know. like you might have heard of the concept of emotional intelligence, which has become uh, an important concept in the last 15 years. Uh, before that, you know, Freud was uh, somebody who put emotions back on, uh, 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 on the radar as something important to track. Uh, you know, many psychological movements after psychoanalysis have uh, given new, renewed importance to emotions. Uh, I will say it's essential, essential to feel your emotions, to develop a, a, an ability to label them. So many of us don't even have clear labels for our emotions. We have a, a lexicon of emotions that's impoverished. So like, how, how that might that uh, play out? I might feel like just frustrated, like generalized frustration, and I could not, maybe I cannot go beyond that. I cannot be more precise about what, what, am I, what does it mean, like frustration? Am I angry? Am I enraged? Am I, uh, am I uh, do I feel uh, powerless? You know, so how precise can I be in describing exactly what am I feeling? So, uh, I would say like most of us tend to suffer from a low-grade version of, of, of Spock, uh, of Alexei Thymia. We're not very good at feeling our feelings, being precise about them, communicating them. And communicating them in a, in a uh, clear way. Uh, so, you know, like, instead of saying, oh, you know, that could be an emotional expression, right? What, is, what, what do you mean, oh, you know, they're having a fight with somebody. Well, I'm upset, you know. What, you know, what are, you know. Explain how upset you are. What are you upset about, you know. Where did you get upset, you know. How do you feel it? Where do you feel this upset in your body? Right. Uh, so that's the kind of, like, uh, exploration 
that allows you to develop emotional intelligence. So that's another problem. Why is it important to track your emotions? Uh, so a key, you know, one of the reasons emotions have become persona non grata in our society is the notion that they bias us, that you shouldn't act rashly, that, you know, barbarians are the ones who, you know, follow their emotion, their instinct without thinking. So we have this notion of, like, get a grip on yourself, don't let your emotions overtake you, and act rashly. And I'm not suggesting that you, that you should act rashly, not at all. I agree that, yes, you should not be taken by your emotions and uh, act rashly. But the problem is that the main way that we have developed to control our emotions is to repress them, to not allow them, to not feel them, to push them underground. Right? And that works, but it comes at a huge cost. It comes at the, you're cutting yourself off from a whole dimension of your experience that, is, that has very valuable information and data. So what I'm suggesting is like an alternative, a more fine-grained way to manage your emotions, which you know, is part of being emotionally intelligent, is to notice your emotions, to not repress them. To notice them, but not to act on them directly. That's where the discipline of awareness comes into play. I notice I have an emotion, I don't repress it, I allow myself to feel it fully. I spend time with it, I notice it. I allow, I, I allow it to impact me fully, right? And then, after I've noticed it, I'm like, what should I do to act in that emotion? Sometimes it's appropriate to act in that emotional way back. I mean, we understand that uh, in love relationships, I mean, po with positive emotions. You know, if somebody, you know, if you're in love with somebody, if you feel positive feelings with somebody, it is meaningful to express that in a, in a, in a fully, you know, uh, emotional way, right? Uh, we understand that when, they're, when, when we experience grief and other kinds of strong events in our lives. But I would say, like, it's also important sometimes to express negative feelings. Now, you don't have to say, like, you know, like, I'm angry, I'm really upset. I was hoping to make a beer slam. Yeah? Uh, but, I mean, you, you know, that's kind of like, uh, you know, like, that would be an out-of-control way of expressing anger. You know, start to get into somebody's face and yell at them. Uh, you, know, there's a, you know, a better way would be like, I am really angry right now, and I would like to talk about it. That's a more measured way. Like, you can feel my anger, right? Uh, it might still be threatening. You might still be like, ooh. Uh, but it's not like in your face slamming and starting to yell where you're like, ugh, you know, I need to get away from that, you know? I can't listen to that. Uh, so very important to register your feelings and express them. Uh, I hope part of what we're going to learn in the class is develop that.